What's up? I see a lot of times online that people are constantly saying like they're praying for and believing for um, their kingdom spouse. And I just want to kind of give a warning when it comes to that. Something you guys don't know about me, um, I don't really like to talk about, but I have been engaged three times and I have been married zero times. Um, my first fiance was my high school sweetheart and um, he was a good guy. I was just really into partying back then. I wasn't ready to settle down. We were together for a good bit of time, you know, and um, you know, he met a woman when we broke up and they're still together and going strong this day. You know, that was just, he always knew what he wanted and um, he got it and I'm happy for them. Um, but I just wasn't ready to settle down back then. So my second one, I met on a rebound from the first one. <laughs> um, I was in recovery and that's how I met him. And we were together for a few years and um, we started to grow at different paces. Um, he was kind of stagnant and I was trying to move on. I was trying to push forward and do other things in my life and it just didn't work out. I ended up, that's actually when I ended up moving to the city um, many years ago. But, um, and then my third one, of course, you guys know about, that's the father of my boys. Um, and I just, I can see how I used to use relationships as a distraction, whether it was a distraction from negative feelings that I was having, whether it was to distract me from consequences that were going on in my life or pain that I was feeling, or, you know, it's just, I don't know, it's just really easy for me to take the focus off myself when I jump into a relationship because I'm very much a nurturer and stuff. Um, for the longest time, I felt like I, you know, feminine me wasn't a strength of mine. Um, but as I read through the Bible and as the Lord and I kind of like, you know, take a stroll down memory lane and revisit some of the patterns and things that have played out in my life, um, I'm realizing that my perception of what feminine was had to do with completely external, you know, like I am not a girl who um, is always in full makeup or her nails done or my hair always cut perfectly. Um, I'm more streetwear than like revealing clothing and you know, the way a lot of other girls are dressed. But I always thought that that meant that I wasn't very feminine, but that's not true. You know, the more I read the Bible, the more I realize, especially in like Proverbs 31, um, forgive me if you hear my kids playing in the background. Um, the more I read and learn about these things, the more I realize, like, I've had those traits for quite some time, and now the Lord's just working on strengthening them, you know? And, goodness gracious, he's loud, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, I'm just having to reevaluate all of these things, you know? Because I can't tell you how many times I scroll online and I see, you know, um, a clip of a woman who just has a picture of herself where she's all done up and posed and then it'll have like a scripture in front of it, you know? And I don't want it to sound like I'm putting those women down, but it's just kind of like, it's like you're portraying this, but you're saying this, you know? And it just, it's not adding up, you know? And I often wonder if people realize how obvious that is to um, an observer, I guess. I see men doing it too now a lot where they'll be at the gym with their shirt off and they'll, you know, do something of the sort. And I just, I guess what I want to say is you got to be careful what you're attracting into your life. First of all, get comfortable with being single because the grass is always greener on the other side. And I know that we all get lonely. You know, I, I experience it too occasionally. Um, but I remind, I try to remind myself, like, when I act on an emotion like that, that's how I end up in a situation where five years have gone by and I'm going through a messy breakup, you know, and a bunch of dreams that I thought or um, expectations that I had are shattered in front of me, you know, and then I got to spend time picking up the pieces and start all over with the Lord because somewhere within that process, I end up making that other person an idol, you know, and it just, it does more harm than good. Like when you, when you try to program your mind to think that way, you start to realize like that lonely feeling is nothing compared to the 
setback and the trouble that you can get yourself into if you get into the wrong relationship. So, you know, just learn to be comfortable with being single, guys. It's, it's, I didn't even realize, like, I'm going on almost two years of celibacy at this point, and I, it hasn't, like, I'm blown away. I thought, I don't know, I just don't add up time in my head. I've been so busy doing other things and focusing on the Lord and kind of my purpose and trying to push my way in that direction that I haven't really stopped to think about it, you know? And I've said this before and I'll say it again, like the kind of guy that I pray that the Lord has for me, I, I hope this doesn't sound too fairy tale ish but I would hope that we're both pursuing the Lord so much and just pushing and, and, and at one point our paths cross, you know, we weren't looking for each other or anything, paths cross and you know, the Lord does what he needs to do. And we just happen to look up from all of the work and things that we have been doing for the Lord. We look up from it and we see each other and that's how it starts. I do not want to be the type of person who is seeking out a relationship, you know, seeking it out at all, whether it's in real life or online. Um, I don't want to be looking for it because when I'm constantly looking and pursuing, I'm more likely to settle. And I don't want to settle. I've settled too many times and it's the reason, it's a big part of the reason why I am where I am right now. I could be so much further ahead. Also, the number one trait that is like most important for me is knowing and seeing a reflection of Christ within him. And if I'm not spending time getting to know Christ and getting to know what it's like to be intimate with him and how he responds to my needs and how he sees me and wants to develop me, then how am I going to recognize any of that in my spouse? You know, because my spouse is going to, I'd imagine, have to understand my purpose and see whatever strengths and weaknesses I have. And um, I need to know that God is going to be the head of the household. I don't want this juvenile, you know, head over heels. I don't even consider it love. I think it's lust um, where you just, you know, you just go all in for that person and you kind of lose yourself in them. I don't want anything like that again in my life. I've had enough of that in my life and it's never brought me anything good. You know, I want somebody who's going to put the Lord above me and who isn't going to be needy and um, depend on me to meet all of their needs. And like I said, you know, like I, I am absolutely, I love to, I love to take care of people probably too much sometimes. Um, you know, it's not that I don't like to do those things. I am just not meant to be their main source of that. You know, they need to go to the Lord first. And I don't want the kind of pressure of a relationship with a guy who isn't going to do that. So um, I don't mean to keep talking about myself, but um, I'm just trying to, you know, share my experience with this to be able to get through what I'm trying to say. Um, it's not really about me. Like, I, I, I already know that, you know, I'm... I know where I'm headed right now and I, I, I don't have time for distractions. The best way that I can communicate this is to share it from, you know, my experience and my perspective. So, um, yeah, to slow down guys, it'll happen. Okay. Pursue the Lord with all your heart and let him add these things unto you later. So be blessed. I gotta get going. Have a great day guys.